let's talk settings. So first of all, game plan UI, I mean, input, self-explanatory. Field of view, I always recommend 100 to 110, but I know a lot of people love full FOV. That's up to you, that's preference. Now, for ADS field of view, I prefer consistent. It's just the change in your field of view when you aim into your reticle. If you like it consistent, you keep it consistent. That's what most people prefer. Now, sensitivity transition, I'd always keep this on instant. Melee during ADS, this is also a preference. I have it on just in case I'm using an SMG. Someone's like in my face and I want to melee, I'm out of ammo. That does help. Uh, aiming interrupts reload. 100% keep this on. This is like helping you reload cancel the animation. You'll notice your bullets actually refill before the animation actually finishes. So you can aim in and interrupt it. Such a great setting. Put this on. Crouch behavior, that's up to you. I always have it on toggle. I think it's a little ergonomically weird to have it on hold. That's up to you. Sprint behavior, keep it on tap. Again, preference, nothing crazy. Auto sprint, uh, I would keep this on off, preferably. Preferably, that's up to you. Then we got sprint interrupt to reload. Actually, I don't know why I didn't have that on. That should be on. That's actually quite useful. It's like similar. You're like canceling the animation. That's up to you. Slide behavior, definitely recommend tap. Definitely recommend tap. Auto reload weapon, probably on. It's always a good idea. Now we have auto switch weapon. That's preference. I mean, if you run out of ammo, it's probably a good idea to switch your weapon. Auto grab ledge, I'd probably keep that off because sometimes that's just gonna get really weird. Uh, really weird animations. Walk behavior. I'm not even sure what the heck this is. I wouldn't worry about it. Scoreboard behavior, that's up to you. Hold, toggle, whatever you guys want. And then adjust HUD limits. Usually you can kind of keep this whatever you want. I haven't seen like people play around with this too much. If you just play the game and you like how it looks, keep it that way, okay? Challenge notification. Yeah, keep it on, keep it on. Damage numbers, that's up to you, that's up to you. Enemy health bars, I definitely recommend this. This is always good for visual feedback, how you're winning your gunfights, how many bullets or how much damage damage your bullets are actually doing. Minimap rotation. I always like to keep it consistent. That's that's up to you. Distance units, doesn't not a big deal. FPS, ping, I usually keep it on just to check how I'm looking. And then network info, that's up to you. This is all diagnostic stuff. So that's for game plan UI. Hopefully that was helpful. Let's move on. All right, let's talk mouse and keyboard, controller settings. First of all, I'm not a keyboarder. I don't play mouse and keyboard, but these is something you have to feel out. Personally on keyboard, I think you can get away with higher sensitivity based on how well you can actually aim. However, on controller, that will be a little bit different. I play claw personally. I actually play claw. I don't have a scuff. I do very well, like 3K skill rating, and I am just default claw. That's up to you guys, button layout, whatever you want. I hear a lot of people like skill, thrum, skill thumb brawler, excuse me, but I play default or brawler. I heard regular brawler is good too. Aim assist, keep this on standard. I don't know why you'd ever disable this. Aim assist strength. Obviously you probably want this as high as it can be. Now I've tried these out. Personally, I think linear is the best. Um, standard is for like newer players, not like the best aiming. Linear is for more experienced players that just need a little bit of fine tuning with their shots. And then reverse S curve is for those people that really like emphasize their movement, spinning screen, all that sort of stuff. So chances are, if you're watching this video for settings, you're probably a linear player or standard, but linear is always a good bet. Horizontal sensitivity. I highly recommend low settings. Most of the other content creators, top players that I've talked to have all said low sensitivity on controller. And the reason is because people move so fast in this game. Yes, you need to track them. But at the same time, if you're trying to react to other fast people moving and your sensitivity is so high, you're not gonna be able to snap on them that well. So. Keep this sensitivity low, trust me, keep it low. Just like Call of Duty, this reminds me of old Call of Duty. If you played old Call of Duty, old, I mean, small sensitivity was always the best, okay? ADS sensitivity multiplier, you should keep this the same. You don't really want too much variability when you're playing because that's just more muscle memory that you have to try and, you know, remember. Dead zone, usually people keep this pretty low. This was on 10 for me for some reason. Don't put this too high, never have this high, this should be 10 or lower, 100%. Acceleration speed multiplier, that's something you can fiddle around with. Usually I don't, again, it's like too much muscle memory. I wouldn't worry about that. Really, I wouldn't worry about that. Inverting, definitely not. And then controller vibration, that's up to you. I actually do like vibration, sorry, but I like vibration, kind of gives you that good feedback that maybe you're looking for. All right, everyone, let's talk audio. Now this game is pretty damn loud. If you just first booted up for the first time, this is probably pretty loud. I'd probably turn these down if I were you. And then voice chat, I mean, this is mostly self-explanatory, especially on a PC. You might want to check your push to talk here, and then you would go to your keyboard and mouse settings, and then you would scroll down until you find push to talk right here. But most games have it on V or something, so 
just keep that just keep that in mind and then obviously make sure your input source is correct and then threshold if you don't want it to peak and then obviously make sure your output um, is also the correct one all right self-explanatory all right now for the big one let's talk about video and graphics everyone display mode should be full screen i have tried windowed full screen as well and honestly if you tab in and out the game actually might start stuttering so let's keep it on full screen, please. Now, if you like native like me, then keep it here. If you like stretched, then you can try this resolution. You usually do one to your back. And then refresh rate should be whatever your highest monitor refresh rate is. My best monitor has 144 at the moment. So that's what it is. Display monitor one. Triple buffering should be off so you don't have more input latency keep that off on the flip side reduce latency should be on right we want the least amount of input latency as possible so our inputs come through faster now if you have this on it may cause a lower frame rate so if you kind of have a potato computer you might want to try it off if you're experiencing problems brightness and contrast that's up to you guys the x12 renderer you should have on if you do have it hdr i do not have it so i mean if you do have it just experiment with it that's up to you graphics quality should be custom because we're gonna be changing a lot of things here vsync should be off because you might have tearing input lag etc always better to keep this off unless you have a really potato computer frame rate limit i have it on just because i record my gameplay it's a lot of resources i set it to 144 to match my refresh limit but you can of course turn it off and it can be uncapped that's up to you if you do have it on the max is 200 Okay, so that's up to you and what your computer can handle. Shadow quality should be low. A lot of these we're gonna have low so we can actually save more resources to actually run the game, have better performance, more frames. We don't care about shadow quality. We don't care about spot shadows, spot shadow resolution, contact shadows. Now this one's important, resolution scale. You can reduce this lower if you want so you can have better performance, more frames, but the game's gonna look more poo so generally you should keep this on 100 sharpening that's up to you you can just play around with it while you're in game to actually see it maybe in the fire range you can play around with the sharpening brightness etc particle detail low fog definitely low global reflection local reflection keep that low vegetation quality like who cares about vegetation quality like are you gonna play melee <laughs> mayday excuse me the map mayday and care about your vegetation quality no keep it low please save your computer some resources subsurface scattering off ambient occlusion definitely off object detail that's up to you what your computer can handle i don't think this one's too crazy it just improves the geometry what what it looks like if your computer can handle it handle it that's good that's up to you extra streaming distance now this actually renders objects better at a longer distance at the expense of more ram more memory so if you have like 32 gigs of ram 16 gigs you're probably fine if you have 8 gigs of ram you might want to keep this low Okay. And then lens flare off, water quality off, who cares about the water quality? And then aberration, have it off. Terrain quality low, same thing. It's like, do you really care what the terrain looks like? You want performance. We don't care how the ground looks, the dirt, the grass, you know, the floor, whatever. We don't care about that. So keep that on low. All right. So if you have any questions on that, let me know down below. All right. All right, language and accessibility. Now, this one should be fairly quick. Obviously, your language, if you want subtitles, that's up to you. Colorblind mode, though. If you like none, that's up to you. But honestly, I do prefer this deteranopia. I'm deteranopia. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but this is actually yellow. If you want your enemies to appear yellow, which is better for your eyes, you know, like yellow is like the best color for your eyes to notice, I'd put this colorblind filter on. Flashbang effect. If you're playing late at night and you don't want to get flashbanged IRL, put this on dark because it, your flashbang actually appears black. It's dark. So it's actually pretty nice touch. Pretty nice touch. Menu text contrast, normal. Narration off. I definitely have narration off. I mean, that's up to you though. And then chat window, if you want to talk to people, chat text to speech. I mean, this is all accessibility settings, right? This is all up to you. Simple enough. And then matchmaking account, crossplay, depending on who you're playing with. You want to play with friends, you're going to have crossplay on. If you're all controller players or you're all keyboard players and you want to stick with your own matchmaking style for inputs, have it off. That's all up to you guys. That's all the settings. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm making how to videos all X Defiant pretty soon. Stick around. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that sub button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.